Chapter 12 What felt like hours later, though in reality it was probably less than one, Devin started to stir. Shush, I said, running my fingers through his hair trying to reassure him. Trying once more to use our connection, I found it still blocked, as there was something between us keeping me from being able to sense him. Bauer must have found some way to block my telepathy. It made me wonder if perhaps he'd blocked all talents. Wondering wouldn't do me any good. Not right now. Hum. Devin shifted in my lap, but it was too dark to see if he was opening his eyes. I'm right here, kept my voice soft. Where are we? What happened, he took the hint and kept his voice low too. In some kind of storeroom, not sure where. What happened? His head lifted and I assumed he sat up. It's Troy and West. How do you know? I heard Troy's voice earlier when I overheard them talking. And Bauer. He came in a while ago. He wants to know where Brandon is and got pissed when I couldn't tell him. Where's Gavin? How'd they get to you? I was stupid. I should have known better. I told him about going back for the paperwork and felt him move to sit against the wall next to me. His leg rested against mine as his hand slid down my arm until he found my hand. His fingers wove between mine, instantly I felt calmer, just knowing he was there to help made me feel better. I don't know what happened to Gavin. They had to have done something to him, or he would have been here by now. We can only hope they didn't kill him. My stomach dropped. It hadn't occurred to me that they might have killed my friend. I tried to reach him telepathically but I don't think I'm getting through. Something's wrong. What do you mean? I shook my head, even though I knew he couldn't see it in the pitch black room. I don't feel like I'm getting through to anyone, and I can only barely sense you. I noticed it before you woke but even now I can't feel anything from you. You can't? Nothing. The part of my mind where you've been for months, it's blank. Not entirely empty but, I'm not getting any feedback from you at all. He was quiet, a moment. I can feel you, but it's not as deep as it usually is. I can sense that you're there, but I'm not getting an echo of your emotions like I usually do. I wonder what happened. I wished I could see him. I suspected he was frowning, and I loved looking at the creases that formed between his eyebrows when he was confused. I suspect they gave me something more than just a trank. Brandon has always known I'm telepathic, it's possible he told them and they found something to block it, I said. To keep you from being able to call for help? That's what I'm thinking. He felt quiet for several moments, but his thumb still rubbed back and forth over the back of my hand in a familiar, soothing movement. Devin had a small talent for telepathy, but other than with me, his didn't go much farther than the next room. Having him try to call for help mentally would be a waste of energy. Have you figured out how we're gonna get out of this yet? There was an element of humor in his voice. Not yet but I was trying to come up with a way to do it by myself. I couldn't figure out how to take them out and get more help without leaving you behind. It'll be easier with both of us awake and able to leave together. He squeezed my hand for a moment. It would have been easier if you'd just left me behind. I couldn't be sure they wouldn't kill you once I was gone. I felt him leaning in and his lips met my cheek. Love you, baby. I love you too. We were quiet for several minutes, each thinking our own thoughts. Tell me about Bauer. Devin said after a while, careful to keep his voice low. I was sitting here, like I am now, so I'm not sure how tall he is but I'd guess around six feet slender. I'd say almost scrawny, but I know he's gotta be able to fight or he wouldn't have made the enforcer team. Dark hair gone shaggy as if he hasn't had time to cut it in a while, I'm not sure about his eyes, the light wasn't good. I knew he wasn't asking for what West looked like, but I gave it to him anyway. I wanted him to recognize him when he saw him. Determined. Dedicated to his supremacy belief system. 
I paused for a moment. There's something twisted inside him, something just not right. But he's easy to anger, and I think that will be his weak spot. You think we should anger him on purpose? I'm thinking we should pretend you're not awake yet. You lay back down like you were and wait for him. When he comes back, I'll do like I did earlier and piss him off. You already made him angry? I knew from his tone that Devin wasn't happy with that news. He was probably frowning at me again. I cringed. Only a little, as soon as I realized he was getting mad I shut down and then he left. What made you realize it? When he hit me, I dropped my voice even lower. I knew it wouldn't do any good, he'd hear me anyway, but I hated saying it. What? Devin whispered behind clenched teeth. It's no big deal. I said something he didn't like and he slapped me. I don't like that he laid his hands on you. I leaned against him and laid my head on his shoulder. I didn't care for it much either, but it was nothing. Really? The tension in his body told me he still wasn't happy, but after a while he started to relax. I left my head on his shoulder as I continued to think about how to get out of there. Have they brought you anything? Food, water? No, nothing. I'm not sure if that's good news or bad. Me either. I knew it meant they might come back at any moment if they were going to feed us, or they might not come back till morning. Either way, it was going to make surprising them harder. Are there any windows in here? One, but it's made of thick glass brick and is too small for me to get out of, even if we were able to knock them out and get it open. Shit, he muttered. Yep. I took a deep breath and blew it out slowly. Well, there's no point in sitting here awake all night, Devin said after a few minutes. We might as well try to get some sleep. I should wake up when they come in. If we're careful and pretend to not wake, we might be able to surprise them if they try to wake us. Sounds like a plan to me. I said, still keeping my voice soft so we wouldn't be overheard. Devin moved away. I couldn't see where he was going, but I heard the rustle of his clothes as he moved to lay on the floor. Come lay with me. Following the sound of his voice, I lay on the floor beside him, on my side with one arm bent to cushion my head. Devin wrapped one arm around my stomach and pulled me back against him, pinning my back against his hard chest. His scent enveloped me, masking the stale dusty scent of the room. The familiar position comforted me, and I listened to the slow steady beat of his heart as I drifted off to sleep. Can you hear me? Devin's voice whispering through my mind woke me. Yes, I sent back. My link to him was restored, just the way it had been before I'd walked into the house the day before. Relief made my stomach flip. I had been afraid whatever they had done to me had permanently damaged our link. There's someone moving around in the next room. They might come in or they might not, so prepare yourself. All right. I braced myself, then forced my body to relax, so I would appear to be sound asleep. I still felt Devin's arm around my middle, but he'd shifted it so he wasn't holding on so tight. It would look more like he'd thrown an arm across me while we slept. The lock clicked and I fought the urge to hold my breath. Whoever was at the door would surely notice that, it would give us away. It seemed like ages before I heard the soft squeak of the hinges as the door opened. I concentrated on keeping my body relaxed and my breathing and heart rate slow and even. Listening close, I heard the quiet shuffle of one pair of feet moving across the floor toward where Devin and I lay. Wait. Don't move yet. Devin's voice was clear in my head. As the person in the room got closer, I picked up a scent. It was the same rancid chicken smell from the day before. It's West. I sent to my mate. You sure? I recognize his scent. He's moving around in front of you. If you can sweep his feet, I can disable him. But be careful, he's probably not alone. If there's someone in the next room, they'll come rushing in when they hear the noise. 
No problem. I waited until West was right in front of me, his scent was almost overwhelming, then I used the arm that was curled under my head and jerked it out and down with all my strength. I felt it hit his ankles and put everything I had behind it. Weston grunted as his feet flew out from under him and he fell. Devon was already moving when West's back hit the ground. My mate stood over the man as his head cracked against the bare cement floor, and he went still. Get behind the door. Devon's voice sounded in my head. I moved behind the door and waited for someone else to come through it. It was only seconds before another person appeared. He was about my height, which meant he was in the neighborhood of 5 feet 10 inches, with dark hair grown shaggy. From behind he looked vaguely familiar, but it was his bitter almond scent that confirmed my suspicions. It was Troy. The man who had pretended to be our friend, then tried to kidnap me. Anger surged through me as I remembered what he'd done and how I'd feared for my lost child. Rage colored my vision as I moved. I hooked one foot around his ankles and swept his feet from under him as I pushed him forward. I used the momentum to follow him down. He grunted, then started to fight back as he hit the floor and I landed on top of him. My hand on the back of his head, I slammed his forehead into the floor before digging my fingers into his hair, pulling back and slamming it down again. All the fight went out of him, but I didn't think I'd knocked him out. The fingers of one hand still tangled in his hair, I scrambled up to place one knee between his shoulder blades. Leaning most of my weight onto his back, I released his hair and pulled his arms up behind his back and took one of the ropes from my pocket. I tied his hands together, making the loop around his hands as well as the knots, as tight as I could manage. Then I got up off his back and stepped back several feet, just in case he was aware and tried to kick out at me. Where'd you get the rope? Devon asked. It's what they tied us up with. Got any more? Without answering, I pulled another length from my jeans and handed it to him while I watched Troy. His back moved as he breathed but otherwise he was still. I didn't trust it. I didn't take my eyes off him as Devon tied West's hands behind his back and stood. You all right? Yeah. You sure? I'm fine. I still didn't take my eyes off Troy. What about him? I don't know. He's alive, but I don't know if I knocked him out or just stunned him. Devon approached the man in question with care. After nudging him with one foot got no response, he reached down and rolled him over. The boneless way he flopped onto his back made it obvious that Troy was unconscious. I took a deep breath and let some of the tension flow from my body. You broke his nose, Devon said, sitting on his heels next to the man he'd once known. Good. I couldn't help the surge of satisfaction that flowed through me. Devon looked up, a worried crease between his eyes. You sure you're all right? Yeah, I just want to get out of here. I'm starving and I stink. Come on then. He stood and motioned me toward the door. After closing and locking the storeroom door he turned back to me. We need to call Bill. We've been missing at least a day, and they're going to be hunting for us. I nodded and turned to look for a PCD, whether mine or anyone else's, to make the call. My search turned up empty so I headed for the front door, planning to look in cars or maybe go to a neighbor. Outside, I found only one vehicle. After searching it thoroughly, I slammed the door shut with frustration. I could see no nearby houses, the closest was probably a half mile away. Shit, I muttered, turning to go back to Devon. I still didn't want to leave him behind. I didn't want to show up at some stranger's house stinking of sweat, fear and piss either. Find anything? he asked as I came back in. No. He stopped and turned to look at me for a moment, his eyes wide. What? I asked. You heard me this morning. Our links restored. Yeah. Have you tried contacting anyone else mentally this morning? My own eyes went wide as I realized what he was suggesting. No, I hadn't even thought about it. Gavin? Bill? Karen? 
I sent the names to the people they belong to, hoping someone was close enough to have heard me. You're alive. Gavin's voice came back after just a second. I wasn't sure for a while. We think we've found you, hold on, we're on our way. We're safe now. Dev and I managed to free ourselves, but I don't know where we are. Good to know. Gavin says they're on the way. I looked at my mate a moment then moved into his open arms. Glad to hear you again, dear Bill's voice came back. We'll be there soon. Bill says they'll be here soon too, I relayed the message. How do they know where we are? Dev wants to know how you found us. I sent to Gavin. The visiting fox is a freaking finder. Once he learned something was wrong, he volunteered to help. Bo. I wasn't sure what a finder was, but I only had two choices which fox he was talking about, and chances were it wasn't the one who couldn't shift. Kitsune don't develop the enhanced senses or extra talents until after they shift for the first time. Yeah, him. He says Bo is a finder, whatever that means. Devin frowned. Bo is one of the visitors from Louisiana? Yeah. Are we sure they're not in on it? And that's how he knew where to find us. I guess it's possible. Any idea how long till you get to us? I asked. We're about 15 minutes out, are you okay? We're fine, I was just wondering how long we'll need to wait. I pulled away from Devon and let him know they'd be here soon before wandering through the house, wondering if there was anything else to wear or anything to eat in the house. How many of you are there? The entire Anakitos team, plus the Anakitos. Wow. Maintaining contact with someone I knew, someone I was familiar with, helped me to steady my emotions. It helped me to regain some of my personal confidence that being kidnapped had shaken. We weren't sure who we'd have to fight to rescue you. None, we rescued ourselves, but we've got a couple prisoners for you. I kept the conversation going as I looked through the bedrooms and bathrooms, searching for anything else to wear. Nothing. Catching a glimpse of myself in the mirror, I stuck my tongue out at my matted hair and rumpled, stinking clothes, then went in search of food. In the kitchen, I found piles of fast food wrappers, but nothing edible. Frustrated and starving, I went back to the living room to find Devon and wait for our rescuers. There, I found him digging through a small closet close to the front door. Looking for something? I asked, flopping down to sit in an old, faded chair that looked like something my mother had gotten rid of when I was a child. Dust billowed into the air around me. I closed my eyes and waited for it to clear. I'm looking for a couple of wire coat hangers, or something else stronger than that rope to tie those two up with, I don't trust it to hold them for long. Understanding, I fell silent, and watched him search while I waited for our rescuers to arrive. You still there? Gavin's voice interrupted my idle admiration of my mate's backside. He was bent at the waist rummaging through the debris on the closet floor. Nowhere else to go. I sent back. It's not like I have much choice. I tried to keep my mental voice neutral, but I knew I failed. Want to let us in? Only if you brought food, I replied. Out loud, I said, the team is here if you want to let them in. Devin backed out of the closet and opened the front door. Gavin was the first to come in, with Caden right behind him. Bill was next with Terry and Gabriel following, then Mickey and Raphael. Bo trailed behind the enforcers looking lost and uncertain. Where are they? Bill asked taking charge. We tied them up and left them in the storeroom where they kept us, Devon said. Caden and Terry headed for the back of the house. Careful, we used the same nylon rope they tied us up with, they may have already gotten loose. Without a word, Mickey and Raphael broke away from the group and followed. How did this happen? Bill stood in front of us, Gabriel right beside him. Bill's crisp black suit was out of place in the dirty house. I was stupid. I said, not bothering to get up. 
Gavin looked around the room, his eyes lingering on me for a moment then he turned and without a word went back outside. Tell me about it. Bill sat in the only other chair in the room. It was as old and decrepit as the one I was in, but Bill was as at ease there as he was in the leather furniture in his home office. I told him how I'd been kidnapped then he turned to Devon, and you? I let my guard down, he said. It's just that simple. They were waiting in the house. They hit me with a trank dart before I even realized they were there. Gavin came back in, a small gym-style bag in one hand. Without a word he set the bag gently in my lap. I frowned up at him confused then looked inside. I saw a set of blue sweats and several cans of meal replacement shakes sitting on top. I think I love you, I said to him. Devin frowned as I pulled out one can and tossed it at him before shaking and opening another for myself. Devin caught the can with practiced ease and shook it while he continued to talk. I drained my first can in three long swallows, set the empty on the arm of my chair and pulled out another. That shake took me a little longer to drink. When I'd finished that can, I glanced around, wondering what was taking the guys so long with West and Troy. I couldn't hear any fighting, but it shouldn't have taken them this long to drag two bound men out. Do we have a few minutes? I turned my attention to Bill. We can go whenever you're ready. We brought enough vehicles that the others can stay here and deal with this. He waved one hand at the room in general. I'd like to change clothes, then I'm ready anytime. Go ahead. I headed for the bathroom I'd already found and took off my clothes. They hadn't let us out of the storeroom in more than 24 hours, not even to use the restroom. I'd had to pee in the corner and I could still smell it on my skin and in my clothes, almost to the exclusion of anything else. After cleaning up as best I could in the grungy bathroom, I pulled on the sweats Gavin had given me, cinching the drawstring waist and rolling the legs so I wasn't walking on them. The material smelled of Gavin, and the familiar scent was soothing. While it wasn't the bone-deep comfort of my mate's scent, it made me feel better. I didn't ever want to wear the clothes I'd taken off again and I considered leaving them behind, but that would only create more work for someone else, so I stuffed them into the bag the sweats had been in and zipped it closed, hoping the thick material would contain at least some of the pungent odor. Carrying the bag over one shoulder, I went out to rejoin the men. I'm ready when you are, I said, reaching the front room. They stopped talking and turned to stare at me. I knew I looked like a lost orphan with wild, unruly hair and baggy clothes, but I didn't care. I felt so much better in my clean clothes that it didn't matter how I looked. Babe Devon spoke first. He came to me and wrapped one arm around my waist, keeping his voice low as he spoke. Would you be okay with going back with the Anakitos, without me? We both knew the others could hear him perfectly clearly, but they let us have at least the illusion of privacy. I'll send Gavin and whoever else you like with you, but I need to stay and deal with these guys. I'm fine with Gavin, I said with a shrug of one shoulder. You do what you need to do. I'd like to go home, take a shower and get something to eat. I gave him the last can from the bag. I'd prefer you stay with at least two of our people until I get this taken care of. Remember, we still don't know where Garza and Anderson are. I nodded. I'd accept the guards without a fight, not because I was afraid, but because his knowing they were with me it would make Devin feel better, and he'd be able to focus on what he needed to do instead of worrying about me. I was quiet just a moment. I'd prefer Gavin and Gabriel, but I'll take Mickey or Caden if they're needed for something else. Gabriel's on Bill but I'll let you have Mouse. I nodded. I want one with you at all times, even so far as in the bedroom while you shower. He looked me in the eye, and I knew he was serious. If I didn't do what he wanted and he found out about it later, there would be a fight. All right. The good part of this was I knew that if Mickey was in the bedroom while I showered, then Gavin would likely cook for me. Even after two shakes I was starving. 
Devin or Bill must have summoned Mickey telepathically because he appeared in the doorway leading to the kitchen, his eyes wide as if waiting for something. Devin issued his orders to my guard and Bill stood. The six of us, Bill, Gabriel, Bo, Gavin, Mickey and myself went outside, leaving the others to deal with our kidnappers. I stopped in front of the crowd of pickups and SUVs, not sure where to go. Come ride with me, Nikki, Bill spoke up. We can talk during the drive and your enforcers can meet us at your place. Gavin took his bag from me and tossed it in the back of his truck before climbing in. Mickey got in the other side. I went to the passenger's side of the large truck and opened the rear door. Take the front seat, Bill said, moving to the driver's door. After we all got in, taking shotgun like Bill had suggested, Gabriel behind Bill and Bo behind me, I waited while Bill turned the truck around then asked, how'd you find us? That was Gidry, Bill jerked a thumb towards the back seat. He's a finder. As soon as he heard you'd gone missing, he volunteered to help. Gavin said that, but I don't know what a finder is. It's a form of divination, Bo said from behind me. Like someone who douses for water. I twisted in my seat so I could see him. So it's not a talent? He scrunched his nose. Not exactly, not like you mean. A lot of humans can do it too, but not with the same, he paused a moment, degree of accuracy that I can. My brows shot up, I was intrigued and something about the way he said it. What's your margin of error? He thought for a couple seconds. About a hundred yards. That's not what I meant. I said with a frown. I wanted to know how often you fail. That's just it. I don't fail not since grade school. You were finding before you shifted? Most shifters don't shift till their mid to late teens. If he was finding in grade school he either shifted early or had the talent before his first change. No, he looked out the window beside him. There was an accident when I was seven, and I almost died. I shifted the first time then, it's the only reason I'm here now. His voice took a flat, distant tone that made me not want to ask for details. I didn't know quite how to respond, so I sat quiet for a moment. So I take it we were only missing for one day? I looked at Bill for the answer. About that. Does my family know? Brain does. I went to him as soon as we realized you were missing. I hoped he might be able to tell us where you were, but all he could tell us was a room with cement walls and floors, no ideas on where it was. I didn't want to worry your folks unless we had to, so I held off telling them. I see. I stared out the front window a moment, wondering how I would explain this to my family. Maybe I could get away without telling my parents about it. I'd still have to deal with rain, but I could do that. This finding thing, I said, turning back to Bo, so you just ask where someone or something is and you know? Bo gave me a half smile. It's not quite that easy. First, I have to have something to focus on, not just a name. A photo of the person will work, but something of theirs works better, some small piece I can hold in my hand. What did you use of mine? I couldn't keep from asking. A necklace. I frowned. Unable to think of what necklace they might use and disturbed by the idea of someone going through my bedroom to find it. Gavin got it, Bill seemed to read my mind. He brought the emerald necklace your parents gave you when you graduated high school, from the house. The necklace he was talking about was one of my favorites. It was a small deep green stone on a fine gold chain. I wore it more often than anything else and knew it had been sitting on top of my jewelry box, not inside. Knowing it had been Gavin in my bedroom, where he'd been many times, and that he hadn't dug through my things, rather picked something up off the top of my dresser, made me feel better. So you touch something that belongs to the person you're looking for. I trailed off, hoping Bo would continue. I focus on them and basically ask where they are. I get a general sense of where and I can point you in the right direction, but if I run my hands over a map, I can usually point it out as well. My brows lifted, it was almost impossible to believe, but I'd had so many impossible things happen to me in the last year, 
that this was just another thing to add to the not-so-impossible list. That's an impressive talent. Shifter-related or not. Are there any others? Other shifters who can find things, he asked. Yeah. Not that I know of, but a lot of people can find things, so even if I'm the only kitsune who can do it, there's always a normal somewhere nearby. I twisted back around in my seat, thinking about it. It would be handy to find the last two men who murdered Annie. I sent the Anakitos. I was just thinking that. I may ask him to help us, if we can get our hands on something that belonged to each of them. He used the same mental channel to reply. Ask Brandon or have Devin ask him. He may know of or have something of theirs, they were friends. That's a good idea. How long until someone figured out what happened? I asked aloud. Unfortunately, several hours. They hit Gavin with the trank too, and when he woke up it took him a while to realize they had taken not only you, but Devin as well. How did they manage that? It seems they tranked Gavin in the cab of his pickup, and he either fell sideways, or they pushed him to lay sideways so he wasn't visible unless you were looking inside the truck. Gabriel spoke up from the back seat. The Theron went home for lunch, saw the truck, and assumed you were inside. They got him as he got into the house, much as we assume they got you. I nodded slowly. They shot me with the trank as I stepped into the hall. I'd only been gone for ten minutes max, and it never occurred to me someone would be in the house that quickly. I was out before I even knew what was going on. I don't know what trank they used, but it lasted a lot longer than the last one. Devin was unresponsive for hours after I woke. There were several hours between our captures, so that may be it, but I don't know. Also, I'm not sure if it was the same drug or something else they gave me, but it affected me differently than it did him. What did it do to you? I told him about losing my connection to Devon and trying to reach out to him, the Electo and Gavin, telepathically, obviously without success. But it didn't do the same thing to Devon? I don't think so. He said he could still sense me, the sense was a bit different than usual, but he almost was completely missing on my end, the connection wasn't empty, just blank. Interesting. Bill said, falling silent again. Have you ever had anything similar happen before? Bo asked. I twisted around in my seat to look at him, I haven't, have you? I've heard rumors but I don't remember the details. I'll have to check with my brother, see if he knows more. I knew there was something significant here, but I didn't know just what. I was mentally and emotionally exhausted. I turned around to sit properly in the seat, wondering what was next. Did they say anything? Bill asked. With slow movements, I shook my head as I stared silently out the windshield, my mind going blank. Nikki. The sharp tone of Gabriel's voice startled me. I blinked several times, then flipped the visor down to look at him in the mirror. What? The Anakitos has been talking to you for several minutes. The bodyguard was frowning at my reflection, obviously worried. I blinked again. He has? I turned to look at Bill. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Bill chuckled. I could tell. You looked a million miles away. What were you thinking about? I gave him a lopsided smile. Actually, nothing. My mind had just gone blank. I guess I zoned out. What was it you were saying? I said I hope Devin can get some information from those two. I'd like to know what they're doing here and where the last two killers are. Weston came in the room where they were holding us once, and tried to question me. What did he want to know? He was looking for Brandon. He wouldn't believe I didn't know where he's being held. Looking for Brandon, hum, he fell silent. These killers you're talking about, are they shifters? Bo asked. Yes, members of my pack who've gone rogue, Bill answered. 
I might be able to help you find them if you have something of theirs. Does it matter if they're shifters for you to find them? I asked. For some reason, I have a harder time with normal humans. He shrugged as if at a loss for why. I frowned, thinking for a moment. How about non shifting Kitsun? Vesson is the only one I know. I've never had any trouble locating him, but I don't know if that's because he's Kitsune or because of our relationship. You had much occasion to find him? Gabriel asked. Never needed to, no, Bo said with a smile, but that didn't stop me from using my talent to torment my brother, especially as a teenager. I couldn't help the smile that spread across my face as I remembered tormenting my siblings, especially Rain, as a teenager. I knew the temptation and how much fun it could be. The rest of the trip was quiet. We pulled into my driveway only a minute or two before Gavin and Mickey. I waited in the truck while they checked the house and came back out to get me. All clear. Mickey said, opening the passenger's side door for me. I turned to look at Bill, both eyebrows lifted. Anything else? No, I'm good. All right. I turned to look at Bo. Thanks for helping find us. If you'll give me a day or two to recover and Bill can get everything set up, I tilted my head in the Anikito's direction, I'll do my best to shift your brother. No worries, Cher. We understand if we need to wait a bit. You take your time and be sure you're well before worrying about us. He gave me a fatherly smile, despite the fact that there was less than ten years between our ages. Thank you. Take care. I'm sure we'll be in touch. I turned back, slid out of the SUV, and landed on my feet in front of Mickey. Don't forget, Bill said, stopping me from closing the door. Only Rain knows anything, the rest of your family has no idea. It's up to you if you want to tell your folks, but they may mention it to the rest of your siblings, and how would you explain everything to them? I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for coming to the rescue. I started to shut the door again. All I did was act as a taxi service, you'd already rescued yourselves. Bill said with a grin. Oh, stay home for a few days. I don't want to hear about you going into the shop until next week. I smiled back and let the door slam shut. Bill waved and put the truck in reverse. I watched him leave before turning and going into the house. I'm gonna take a shower, I said as soon as I made it through the door. I could still smell piss all over myself and it was driving me crazy. Twenty minutes later I opened the bathroom door, a puff of steam preceding me out, to find Mickey standing in my bedroom, his back to me. He stood with his feet planted about shoulder distance apart and one hand grasping the opposite wrist behind his back. That can't be comfortable, I said, as I moved past him to my dresser. I'd taken jeans and my favorite sweatshirt into the bathroom with me and dressed there. Picking up my brush, I sat on the foot of the bed and started working the tangles from my wet hair. It takes a little getting used to, but it's not bad, he said without moving. Have we heard anything from Dev? No, ma'am. I took a deep breath and let it out slowly. I hadn't expected to hear from him so soon, but I had hoped. There was no telling how long it would take him to do what he needed and figure out what to do with them afterward. It may be hours before he came back to the house. I kind of wanted to go see my family, but I couldn't show up at my parents' house with two guards without them asking questions. They were used to Gavin, but having him and Mickey both would make them ask questions I didn't want to answer. You mind if I call my brother? He'll probably want to come over. The cop? Yeah. I don't see a problem with it, but let's see what Gavin thinks. He knows how the Theron thinks better than I do. I nodded and finished with my hair, pulling it up into a ponytail high on the back of my head, before dropping the brush back on my dresser. Come on, let's go see if Gavin's got anything ready to eat. There was nothing ready yet but Gavin approved calling Rain. Another twenty minutes passed before Rain arrived. Gavin was just pulling the biscuits out of the oven 
when Rain opened the front door. Gavin continued to cook without so much as flinching, but Mickey jumped, spinning toward the front room as if expecting an attack. I smiled and realized I probably should have warned him that Rain only bothers to knock when Devin is around. Since I told him Devin wasn't home yet, he'd ignored Devin's truck in the yard and let himself in. Where are you? My brother's voice was strained as he shouted the question. Kitchen, I called back, waiting for him to join us. There you are, he said, stepping into the kitchen. His hooded sweatshirt and jeans let me know he wasn't on duty but his face told me more. Small signs of worry marred his face, the tiny lines between his brows were much deeper than usual, and he looked like he hadn't slept in several days. Here I am. I stood in front of him for a moment, letting him get a good look and see that I was fine, then I moved into his arms, letting his familiar cinnamon scent surround me. It wasn't the same bone-deep sense of home I got from Devon, but I knew it was as reassuring to him as it was to me. You look okay, but how are you really? I'm good. Really? He narrowed his eyes and lifted one brow. I suppose some might be intimidated by the look, but I wasn't. I laughed. Really, Rain? It wasn't fun, in fact, it was scary as hell, but I'm not hurt. He watched me a moment longer, as if he didn't believe me. They did something to you, though. What do you mean? I tilted my head to one side. I'm not sure, he frowned. Tell me everything. If you're gonna go through the whole thing, do it while you eat, Gavin said, putting a large bowl filled with scrambled eggs on the table. I turned around and was surprised by the sheer volume of food he'd cooked. Might as well join us, I said to Rain. There's plenty. I started filling my plate and recounting my story at the same time. When I was done talking I'd emptied two plates and was filling a third with biscuits and gravy. Rain blinked a couple times, watching me. What? I glanced back at my plate, self-conscious. They managed to affect your link with Devon? Rain asked, looking back down at his plate for a moment. That's not good. No shit. It scared the crap out of me. I had no way of knowing if it was permanent, or if I'd be alone in my head forever. As soon as the words left my mouth I realized how strange they sounded. I shook my head and grinned. What? Rain asked. I continued to shake my head, still grinning. I just realized how bizarre that sounded. Never thought I'd ever say that, but when I was faced with the possibility, it was terrifying. Rain gave me a crooked smile. I bet once you got used to it, to lose a connection like that would be hard. Mickey and Gavin both nodded, their faces grim. To find your mate and then somehow lose them is something we all fear. Gavin put in. How long did it last? Rain wanted to know. All of yesterday. I shrugged. It was back when I woke up this morning. Rain frowned. Is there something I need to watch out for? I asked, concerned by his obvious worry. I don't know. He shook his head slowly. I get the sense this isn't over, you're still in danger. Gavin and Mickey sat straighter. His words made them both instantly more alert and attentive to their surroundings. The same people or a new threat? Gavin asked Rain. I can't tell. Rain looked at me, a deep crease furrowing his brows. I laid my fork on my plate and reached across the table to take my brother's hand. Close your eyes a moment and try to relax, see if that breaks anything loose. He did as I requested and sat still, drawing in several deep breaths. I kept his hand in mine, hoping that keeping the physical connection would make it easier for him to figure out whatever was bothering him. The tension slowly drained from him, letting his shoulders droop and the lines disappear from his face. After several more deep breaths, his eyes popped open. It's the same people, possibly more, but whatever I'm sensing isn't whatever they did to interfere with your connection to Devon. Mickey and Gavin both stood and turning in different directions, went from room to room checking windows and doors. Something wrong? 
I asked once they had both returned. No, just checking the locks. We left the house locked yesterday and they were inside when they took you, Gavin said. We're checking all the doors and windows at regular intervals. I thought you guys had the ones who did this in custody? Rain asked tense once more. We have the two who held them, but they could have been working with more people that we aren't aware of, Mickey said, taking his empty plate to the sink. We don't want to get caught unaware again. Do you really think they'll be back tonight? Can't be sure. Gavin shrugged. Anderson and Garza are still out there somewhere. For all we know, they may be working with Bauer and Behrman. They may decide we won't expect anything so soon. We'll be prepared just in case. Rain looked at him a moment, then gave a nod. He took a deep breath and let it out slowly. I'm relieved you're home safe. I wish Devin were here so I could talk to him too, but I'll have to come back to do that. You've got to go already? I asked. I'm due on shift in less than an hour, and I still need to get dressed. He stood and I followed, moving in to give him another hug. Thanks for coming to check on me. I said as his arms wrapped tight around me. You need to stay out of trouble. He released me and stepped back to look me in the face. You're giving me gray hair and I'm way too young for that yet. His lips curved into a slight smile, and I knew he was only half-teasing. I didn't blame him either. I'll try now go before you're late. I gave him a kiss on the cheek, walked him to the door, and watched out the window as he got into his pickup and pulled out before going back to finish eating.